welcome back to Britain's favourite view. Our next view takes us to the southernmost tip of the country. Passing Dartmoor and the landscapes scattered with the remains of Cornish tin mines, we come to a place that's become a holiday destination for millions and an artist's haven for many. To tell us why he thinks St Ives is home to Britain's favourite view is artist Rolf Harris. St Ives, a shining jewel situated in the most southwestern tip of Cornwall. Rich in history and tradition, and framed by some of the most stunning scenery this country has to offer. There's something very special about St Ives. Its history lies in fishing, but it's also a mecca for artists, and it's easy to see why. Its charm is all around from cobbled streets with quaint shops and galleries, to the many beaches, each with its own unique character, or the history of this once thriving fishing village. All these things combine to make St. Ives the perfect place, and I believe, Britain's favorite view. <laughs> this delightful little town is also home to some of the friendliest people you could ever wish to meet. <laughs> the reputation of St Ives as a tourist trap goes back to the 1870s. The introduction of a railway running all the way from London right down to the beach over there in St Ives saw a boom in tourism. And with the tourists came a new breed of St Ives inhabitant, the artist. Walk around the quaint cobble streets of St Ives and you'll find a gallery on almost every corner. The best known of these galleries is undoubtedly the Tate St Ives, just a frisbee's throw from Portmeor Beach. The architects of the Tate crafted the galleries to take full advantage of the scenery. The views are an inspiration for the hundreds of artists working in St Ives. And the studio of one of them, painter Roy Ray, overlooks the whole of the town, giving him the prime position for some stunning views of the sea, stretching far away to the horizon. I've been told that the light is really special in St Ives. It really is. It's not an artist's fantasy. It's a combination of several factors. The town is almost an island, surrounded by highly reflective silica sand, and we sit just underneath the edge of the Goldstream air current, which is very clear, that air. So you put all those factors together, and you've got light bouncing around to a higher level than anywhere else. What is your favourite view of St Ives? Do you have one? I do, I do. It's from above. Ah. From the air, St Ives is absolutely magical. Art is so intrinsic to this community, it's become almost like a currency. <laughs> you see, the town's oldest pub, the Sloop Inn, has historically been the hostelry of choice for the local artists who used to pay their not inconsiderable bar bills with their latest masterpieces. Of the pub with no beer. What can I do for you? Uh, do you do you ginger beer? That'll be 175, please, Ralph. Are you serious? Could you take it out of that? That'd be brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. A cunning plan, but not possible for everyone. For example, one of the town's more unusual artists, Simon Carroll, doesn't just take inspiration from the St Ives coastline, he uses it as raw material. How long have you been doing this, uh, Simon? Uh, about uh, seven years now. Uh, started, uh, this is to you actually. Oh. Uh, started, uh, I used to come on holiday with my girlfriend at the time and uh, saw these kids have been writing their names like they always do. And we climbed up on this cliff to have a look and it just like, I thought, wow, that's it, that's what I'm going to do. 
so I, I bought a rake. Once I started doing it, I remember when we was kids, we was always watching you doing stuff like this on the box. Really? Yeah. And, oh, uh, the big paintings. The big paintings oh. and uh, drawing with the, the line markers on the football pitches and stuff. What is it about St Ives that inspires you to have a go at this sort of thing? Well, it's, uh, well, it's a actual beautiful location to be able to just make some art and, uh, and a good excuse to be here, really. But it... Is there any chance of me having a go at a bit, then? Absolutely. Two little boys had two little toys. You've got to try and work out what it's going to look like from way up there. In fact, you make a good labourer, Rob. Actually, you're so much better at it than me. Give us the thin one. Of course. <laughs> And they're going to be hanging. I'll get that next week. His horse I'm absolutely shattered, and I've done about four feet. But I think it's that I remember. Thought I'd lost you. When we Happy were to be back. Yes. Good boy. <laughs> oh, wow. It looks for all the world like a. Um, a mad railway line going around the beach, doesn't it? It does, yeah. Or a roller coaster, you know? How does it feel when you see the waves coming in to obliterate your work? I, I really like that, actually. I, I, I don't mind that at all. It's a, yeah, a temporary yeah. thing, and then, uh, then it can just go back to its oh. normal beauty. Yeah. Take my hat off to you. Yeah. Good on you. It reminds me of the song, On a day like today, <laughs> we pass the time away writing love letters in the sand. How you laugh as I cry each time I saw the tide take a love Simon has plenty of blank canvases to work on. The Cornish coast, which covers almost 300 miles of southwest England, has over 150 beaches and St. Ives has four of the best. And they've got some pretty interesting names too, such as the surface haven of Porth Meor, or the lazy sun traps of Porth Gwydon and Porth Minster beaches. These beach names have their origins in the ancient Cornish language, Canuic. Porth means cove and Meor means big, so Porth Meor just means big cove. The real heart and heritage of this town, though, is without a doubt the fishing industry. Way back in the 19th century, St. Ives was dependent upon fishing, pilchards being its main export. And in those times, local fishermen would wait for the cry of a man called a hewer, who used to spend endless days in this hut on the hill, eyes fixed on the sea. From his vantage point here, high above the bay, the hewer would watch for changes of colour on the surface of the sea, indicating a shoal of fish. And he would then, with two white sticks, with like table tennis bats, he would direct the boats to exactly where to go to catch those fish. Today, the town's fish hall is primarily distributed to the many popular seafood restaurants in the area, which feed the new economic industry, tourism. Yes, Morning, Rolf. Did you put these steep steps in? No, not personally. How are you, sir? How important is fishing to St Ives today? It's very important for the small local boats. A lot of um, restaurants in the town are selling a lot of shellfish dishes, crab sandwiches. They love lobsters. We got a fish? Yeah. Should we pull him in, Rolf? You pull him in. Hey. Fresh mackerel. <laughs> As a fisherman, what's your favourite view of St Ives? My favourite view is um, at the end of the day, coming back home and coming in around the head and looking into the town and there's people everywhere eating yeah. ice creams and the smell coming from the restaurants in the evening. You can smell it up. Yeah, you can smell it, the food wafted out of the town. You're out here thinking, I'm starving. <laughs> you can't go here. You have to stay out a bit longer. <laughs> While John's favoured view of St Ives is pretty special, for my favourite view, it's time to head back to dry land. And some of my new mates here are in no doubt which view should be voted Britain's favourite. Obviously, none of this has been rehearsed. One, two, three. <laughs> And 
as an artist, a perfect view is something that inspires me to put up my easel, get out my canvas and start painting. And for me, this is the perfect place to capture it. Such vibrant colour here. I mean, you, you have a clarity in the atmosphere that you don't seem to get anywhere else. Wonderful. Can you tell what it is yet? Hurry, hurry, hurry. From here, you gaze down over the people on this lovely stretch of sand, over the roofs of the multicoloured houses which once belonged to the fishermen, into the harbour and right to the hub of the town. It's a view that I believe is second to none. I really believe that no other place in Britain could match this view. So please, vote for St Ives. Make it Britain's favourite view. You can vote for St. Ives to be in the final when the lines open at the end of the show.